Thank you. And uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the fact of being either co-founder or employee and working at a startup or a large company. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story first, and then I'm going to try to give me my insights on the similarities and differences. And then finally, I'm going to try to tell you a little bit about how I see this going forward and how I use that perspective. So first off, a little bit about me. Well, when I started here at DTU, I got really inspired to start a company. And the reason for that was uh, these primary three things. I worked at a company called Church Desk right out of high school, where I became a full-time project worker. I was uh, handling some big projects myself, and I was starting to meet like a lot of people in the startup community because this was a startup. We were sitting working at the top floor of the IT university in an incubator, and uh, it was really encouraging to meet all these people in the community and learning a bit about startups. So I felt very motivated and encouraged to start my own. That combined with learning a lot about practical skills and having a business and starting a business from uh, business high school really kind of made me see, oh, I could actually use this in a practical manner doing a startup. And then when I started at DTU, I started as uh, what I sometimes refer to as a product development, developer education. And uh, I realized there's so many opportunities out here at DCU to join different networks, come to events like this, and be in different competitions where you get to really develop yourself and your ideas. So after the first semester, we had developed this great idea, which is Dropbox. And there's one standing right there and one standing on the corner right there. And the use case for this was at events, you suddenly have a large influx of people, but you don't have the necessity infrastructure to handle all this trash. So by delivering a disposable trash bin, you can suddenly increase that infrastructure and throw it all away right after the event. We got really good feedback after handing in the project. So we decided, well, let's try to join some competitions in it. So we made a business plan and we joined Venture Cup. And uh, that was a really exciting time for us, trying to go through the business plan, getting feedback, developing it, seeing where this idea really could go. And we got a, this was an idea that was created on the first semester of ETU, which kind of sounded insane to ourselves at least. But uh, after Venture Cup, we got a lot of feedback and realized we, can't, we weren't going to be seven people starting a business from this. So we realized that uh, three of us really wanted to found this as a uh, business and see where it could take us. And uh, well, that mean, meant producing and selling. So we had to go see a lot of stakeholders, go meet a lot of people, network, um, and fi find the funding. This picture is actually a really funny picture. It's uh, the day after we uh, got some funding from Aarhus Municipality. We went to an impromptu meeting, which we set up like five minutes before and just ran to their offices to, to meet them and hear if this was something they would be interesting about. We actually didn't end up putting it on North side that year, but uh, after visiting a lot of manufacturing, uh, manufacturers and get all the funding and handling the intellectual property, we uh, ended up getting a delivery of drop buggers that was going to be used as a test case on Roskilde. We ended handing out and setting up 400 drop buggers for this first test case at Roskilde. During that summer, we suddenly started to get a lot of media attention and a lot of interest from smaller events that also wanted to try these. So we were selling them in a few pieces and we had uh, a lot also in Roskilde municipality who had helped start, us, start this company. That meant at the end of the summer we had uh, delivered about 800 drop buckets and kind of successfully proven that this is, was a viable business idea and was a viable uh, product for use in these kinds of situation. But it also meant the beginning of the end for me after this summer. I had gotten a great opportunity to go study uh, aeronautical engineering at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. And this is, was a field that I've been very interested in since I was a little kid. So it was something 
I really I had to think about it, but it wasn't really hard. I, I needed to do this. I needed to go study this. It was hard to be actively involved in a startup company that was only a year old um, from halfway around the world. So by the time I returned to Denmark and had helped uh, sign and uh, successfully sign an investor, I exited Dropbox to pursue other opportunities. But when one day a door closes, you open another often. I realized that uh, by not longer being in Dropbox, I suddenly opened up for a lot of other possibilities. I, uh, I worked on other projects, I became a Green Challenge Prize winner. I went to work uh, on my bachelor's for a very interesting company that was trying to start a completely new business area in a field I never really worked in before. And finally, I got to travel to Korea with DTU and represent DTU at an entrepreneurial conference, which also was very exciting. What I didn't know at that time was that uh, going to the US and studying aeronautical engineering actually helped me land a job, an internship at a Fortune 500 company in a very, very closed off industry, at least usually if you're from Denmark. I went to Lockheed Martin in Texas where everything is bigger. I went to work at this big company at a big division and a big plant on these uh, jet fighters. This is one of the most complex products in the world and uh, it's made by a company that can trace its roots all the way back to the Wright brothers. In total Lockheed has about 100,000 employees. I was working alongside 17,000 employees just as this plant, which were uh, a mile long, and it took me about 15 minutes to walk from my office to the parking spot where the car was parked. It was huge working at this company, and it was uh, very, very different from anything I ever expected or I think I could experience here in Denmark. Currently, I'm writing my thesis at Universal Robots, and the reason I'm telling you all this is because I want to talk to you about the similarities and differences. And working in a startup is very similar to working in an established company, at least I found. But there is a lot of differences still. And in the end, these are also very dependent on the kind of role you hold, which kind of company you're in, or which kind of phase the company, the company is in. Like you can be entrepreneurial and being a startup in an established company, and you can also have a very regular role in a startup where you have a very speci specific defined area of responsibility. But I'm going to talk a little bit more about the extremes. So I'll draw on my experience as a startup from Dropbucket and Churchdesk. I'll try to uh, correlate that to working at Lockheed Martin. And somewhere in between there was the bachelor firm I worked for, which was DK and uh, Universal Robots, where I'm now doing my thesis. The three things I find is, uh, is important to highlight the differences is in the way you actually have, you develop your purpose at the company, the, uh, the way you work and how you develop yourself because all these are, have some extremes. So if you look at the purpose, in a startup, I felt the shared goals and the vision was very close to me. It, it feels like you can directly relate your work to your, the shared goals. Whereas in a larger company, it was hard to really relate that. It would seem very distant. It had been cascaded down through endless of departments and the whole hierarchy to reach you. And that also meant for a startup, the individual goals were maybe a little more abstract and complex. They were a little more team oriented and oriented for the entire team rather than just being for you specifically. In a large company, you often, you, most people had an individual goal, which also was related to the team, but you had your individual goal. An example of this was for Dropbox, we had to create this customer case, and that meant for each of us that we had to go find these suitable test cases, raise funding, prepare manufacturing, and ensure this successful test run so we could establish and develop our business. At a large company, it might be on-time delivery of 50 units with zero defects. So after cascading down and everybody getting their area of responsibility, that might mean you had to correct uh, defect types with rework more than, 100, more than 1,000 hours. The second thing was workspace and information flow. I find that in a smaller business, you have a good idea of what everybody's doing, what's going on around you, 
who's responsible for what and what does that actually mean. In a large company, you don't necessarily know. As again, I was working with 16, 17,000 people and it would just be impossible, impossible for me to know all the things everybody else was doing. The other thing about working was the tools you used. In a startup, you really use whatever you feel is, is useful and uh, gives you a high usability and efficiency. You're willing to take risk on new tools because if they can help you get in a competitive advantage, that's what you're going to do. In larger corporations, it's more grounded maybe in Microsoft SharePoint and Office as a core, and then you have specialized tools that might seem outdated. Examples of these are, uh, for instance, product data, ma data management that might be from the turn of the century, or millennium in this case. Finally, the personal development. In a startup, you get a lot of responsibility um, and that helps you develop a lot, but you also, the, the size of the responsibility, the impact of the responsibility isn't necessarily that big. In an established company, you might get a little, very tiny fraction of responsibility, but the impact might be huge. It might mean millions that you find out to save just half a kilogram on something on an airplane, which ends up just, yeah, it takes stuff out of proportions for you. It also often more specialized challenges. They ask you because you're good at this. Whereas in a startup company, it's more maybe, hey, who can do this? We need to do this. Then you have the training. You have on your job training both places. But whereas in a startup, you might have to go out and find people you can set up meetings with. In an established company, there's usually people who already have a really good knowledge of what you're working on and you can develop on top of that knowledge. There's also formal and informal courses in a startup. You have to go find your own courses. You have to go find out who can teach you this. Whereas in an established company, you have more internal courses. And finally, there's the network you develop. What kind of options and groups and the knowledge you gain. Again, it's more external for a startup and I think more internal for, for a, big, a big company. So going forward, what I'm trying to pay attention to. And uh, if you take any way, anything away from the, the session, I hope it will be these, these things. So I believe that uh, what makes work great for me or more motivating for me is having, oh, sorry, having great people to work alongside with, having uh, a good culture, a good company culture, some place where you can feel you fit in, some place where you communicate on the same level with people, and somewhere where you have passion. So some work where you feel you really, you really make a difference and make something that's valuable to you. The second thing is, how do I progress? How can I progress in wherever I go next? And that's partly through which kind of challenges I'll get, which kind of learning and training opportunities, how can I become smarter or more knowledgeable about certain areas of expertise? And finally, which kind of people will I meet? How will, I, how will my career go? And this is a very big question, which is also a lot about the third thing, my timing. What is a unique opportunity and where can I find this? Can I, if something presents itself to me, should I take it or should I not? What's happening in my world and around me? Does it make sense for me to do this? And finally, what, what is my personal priorities? As I said, that leaving a startup actually meant that kind of clearing up some of my personal priorities and kind of aligning when I started a company, aligning it with the company. So my final words it's today is don't waste the opportunities you're given, but beware that an opportunity requires investment for you and you need to do something to make it work. Priorities and choices, try to understand them. It will help make you comfortable with your decisions and understand the consequences of those. Finally, go meet interesting people. You're here today. You have met one already. You'll meet more later. And uh, participate in competitions and events. It will help you to develop personally and vocationally. Thank you.